Somebody complained that I had too many animals in my videos. Therefore, I'm going to up the ratio of animals in videos 1,000%. I was interested in building some tactical cleaning kits for my uh, my long rifles and um, so I googled it and I YouTubed it and I found next to nothing and so I thought I'd pull out my cleaning kits and see what I could do about that so if you served you probably recognize this this is an actual issue uh, M16 A2 cleaning kit except for the broken shell extractor. I'll get to that in a second. Um, I added the dental pick, but other than that, that's, that's you know, as you, as you see. And these things are, are okay. They, um, well, not okay, they're great. They work wonderful. The only thing I was, I was thinking when, when I said they're okay is the, the case. The case is a holdover. It's like a Vietnam holdover. I mean, it, it takes a, uh, an Alice clip, as you can see over here, uh, right there and it's supposed to go on the side of your um well i've seen it on the side of the alice pack and i've also seen it on the side of the butt pack but the fact is it's it's not really well thought out so i started thinking about a, a different way to go and as i said i've always added a dental pick and recently i've added a broken shell extractor to my ar-15 cleaning kit and that's as close to a tactical cleaning kit as, as I can get it's something small that can go onto your gear into the field and so I just recently got into the uh, 308 AR10 LR SR whatever they call that thing now but a 308 AR and uh, so I bought this off Amazon and it's a you know, a, a, a close resemblance to the issue and close enough I mean it, it looks it looks fine uh, to the issue uh, uh, cleaning kit the um, the rods are beefier just as they should be uh, and obviously the the um, bore brushes are bigger again I added my own dental brush and um, oh I'm missing my uh, I'm missing my uh, bottle of CLP from this one. I'll have to go hunt that down. And, and again, I bought a broken shell extractor. And let's go ahead and get that out of the way. <sighs> I've never used a broken shell extractor, ever. Well, that's not true. I've used it on a 50 cal, on the on M2. Um, other than that, I've never used one. We had them with our crew served weapons, but with an AR-15 or M16, you know, I've shot thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds, never needed one. My understanding and my, my intelligence here is very limited, is that they are most often used when you're dealing with brass that's been used more than once. And of course with the uh, issue ammo, that wasn't an issue. So, I went ahead and got them because if you're looking at a SHTF or a um, um, WROL or any kind of situation where you're having to fend for yourself and maybe supplies are limited, maybe the uh, system's broken down where you can't order something from Optics Planet or, or Amazon or go to your local gun store. Um, <laughs> maybe in a scenario where 2A is gone and there are no local gun stores. It's nice to have a broken shell extractor in each one of your rifle calibers. So I picked these up. They're inexpensive, 10 bucks a piece. Uh, who did I get this from? It's UTG. I think I got it from Optics Planet. I'm not sure. And um, and they're going to come out of their packaging and they're going to go into their respective uh, 5.56 and 308 uh, packages. Now, in recent years, when I went hunting out of state, this is the uh, kit I would take. And this is a pig lube kit. I got to admit, I didn't seek this kit out. This came in a tack pack back when I was doing tack pack. And it's pretty much the way it was issued, except for I added 
I added this uh, rope, uh, and and I think I added the um, the uh, uh, swabs. But other than that, it's it's and I, well, and I ordered. I actually <laughs> I added a lot of stuff, didn't I? I added this uh, little hops cleaning thing. I think gun cloth. But um, anyway, I've taken that on on all my out of state hunting trips. And it's worked just fine. It's a good little kit. Uh, goes in here. And I tell you what, if they had thrown some molly on the back of it, I might say, here's your tactical gun cleaning kit. Although it's got a lot of bits and pieces. Uh, good little kit. Good little kit. And then there's this. This is a kit and caboodle. I don't know if it's still made. I bought that thing. Talk about <laughs> old times. At the Soldier of Fortune convention. Gee whiz. What, in 85? in uh in las vegas i was stationed at 29 palms and me and some friends decided just to take off and go to the soldier of fortune convention and that was a wild ride uh, 85 86 i'm not sure met oliver north met some mujahideen fighters who were at the time fighting who who the soviets um it was a wild time robert k brown blah 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 it was it was interesting um who else was there um, was Dale Dye there? Dale Dye might have been there. I know I've met Dale Dye. I just can't remember if I met him there. Um, anyway, anyway, I bought this there that long ago. So, so my guess is that this is really a, a kind of a uh, archetype or or um, first generation version of this. You know, it was a it was a coated cable with threaded brass ends i mean i think they were they were getting there and uh otis that, that's their idea and and i carried that sometimes because it had the bare minimum pieces of what you needed to clean a weapon um so starting from all those things my goal is to create a tactical cleaning kit and just by the name tactical cleaning kit it's going to be bare minimum it's going to be what you got to have in the field to get your gun back up and running. So what is the bare minimum for a tactical cleaning kit? Well, I would say the bare minimum would be some lube. You gotta have some lube on you. And that's gonna fix a lot of things if you're just preventative in the get-go uh, with your lube, you're gonna fix a lot of things. And, um, and the lube doesn't have to be in this form. I mean, I know people who use uh, axle grease and, and axle grease works really well. It certainly works well on the AK, I understand. Um, so I know I know a guy who, who carries axle grease in one of those little lip balm things, and that's what he uses. So whatever. So at the bare minimum, it's going to have to be some, some lube. And then I think the broken shell extractor should be part of that bare minimum. And then the third thing would be some sort of way to clear your bore. Well, I'm losing my, I'm losing my uh, patches over here. Patches, we don't need no stinking patches. So, um, whether it be, you know, the rope, whether it be this thing, whether it be full bore, that has some weight to it, whether it be full bore um, um, rods, uh, some way of, 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 of cleaning your barrel. And then I think there needs to be a brush because it may not just be your bore that needs cleaning. I mean, if you fall in the mud and you got just mud and dirt and sand in your uh, your BCG and up there, you know, yeah, in your bore, you, you need to clean that stuff out. So, so I'd say at the bare minimum, you need these things. So, once we know what the bare minimum is, then we can start looking at how we're going to carry it. So, when thinking of ways to carry this cleaning gear, the first thing we wanted to do is think of ways to carry it on the weapon itself. And Magpul's done a good job of helping us to carry our lubricant. So if you're not familiar, Magpul makes a insert for their, I guess all of their pistol grips. Um, they have a couple actually. Uh, I think there's one that'll hold batteries. I think there's one that'll hold just, you know, your, your spare parts kit. But then there's one that's made to hold the uh, the the bottle of lube. Now here's the only problem I've seen with this. I've got 
I've got this on every one of my rifles except for the the A2 and that's just because I'm trying to stay you know true to the stock <sighs> this thing leaks this is the bottle that comes with it. this you know you get the bottle with it this thing leaks um, every single one of them when I open it I've got lube on it uh, not to the point that it that leaks out but it's not a great bottle Magpul do a better job with your bottles because they're always luby but I still carry it because that way I have lube if nothing else I've got lube on me and that's just that's just a smart way to go and and I don't mean to uh, talk down I'm sure that everybody uh, watching this video knows about this but I just want to point out that's the way to carry the lube without taking up any extra space on your gear or having to um, to make way for this bottle it's a great way to great way to go so then we're left with uh, several other items and when you start looking at how you're going to carry them you got to look at the the size and shape and the longest item is going to be your brush now i have seen people cut their brush down to about there and you could certainly do that and that'll that'll uh certainly improve how you carry it and, and and what you can put it in but i like having that handle i like being able to get in there and having that torque so i don't usually cut mine down i've done it in the past but just not going to anymore so let's try to find a way to carry and and i'm not saying it has to be one of these ropes um if you're carrying this you could just as well be carrying that I mean, they take up the same amount of space as far as that goes. So I'm not, I'm not saying we have to go with the rope. The rope works good, but there's something to be said for this, uh, this stout um, uh, rod. And just a little side note, back in the early Vietnam days, Mac V. Sog guys, a lot of the photographs you can look and you can see where they've put this thing together, this rod, and then they've taped it to the, uh, alongside the handguard of the rifle so that they can easily remove it and I want to say that I read that was because they were having a lot of a lot of uh, issues with uh, stuck cases broken cases now why they didn't go to this I don't know but that's what I've read I'd love to know if anybody has any intel on that why that was but we're not going to take a clean rod to our rifle um, we're going to try to find a way to carry it now again, there's, there's nothing wrong if you want to carry your uh, cleaning kit in this issue type uh, uh, cleaning, uh, cleaning case. You can easily change this uh, Alice clip with a uh, Molly clip if you want to. But I personally would like to see other attachments or maybe even flip it. I don't know. I would like to see it done differently. So that's why I'm looking at some other stuff so what it is I just went through my uh, my gear and I just found some some pouches and I'm not saying you have these pouches or that you can even find some of these pouches but these are just pouches that I looked at and thought that might work and the first one this is an old radio pouch from a long time ago and it's so funny I have used this radio pouch for so many things back when I was uh, active duty in EOD I used to carry a mag light here one of those mini mags matter of fact the foam is still there from because the mag light went too far down so I stuck a piece of foam right there so that the mag light stuck out a little bit and I could grab it and um, and what did I carry in here I carried tape in here electrical tape and then I I, th I guess I carried maybe gloves and and crimpers and maybe some pliers in that pouch and this was my EOD pouch this is what I carried um, we didn't carry a lot of gear. Uh, most calls, we either had to have big kits or we were able to solve it with, you know, crimpers, pliers, some electrical tape, flashlight. Eh, didn't take much. So, uh, so this, this was, this was a radio pouch that I used as my EOD pouch. And you know what? It's a little big, but it would certainly work. I mean, you could get all the all the cleaning rods in there you certainly got room for for that there I mean you could put a, a full kit in there but then we're getting to the same size so I'm just saying now this is a pouch not sure what kind of pouch it was I've got a couple of them because I first got it because 
my phone fit in there really well. So I used to carry it from my phone. But it's kind of like the EOD pouch, and it might be some sort of EOD pouch. Because um, it has has places to put several things. But I'm just trying to give you an idea. Now here's a pouch we all may have, and it's a... Eh, I hate trying to do this stuff one-handed. One hand and one mouth. Okay, so this is a, a double mag pouch, and you could certainly get all the stuff in there and just carry it on your belt like one of your mag pouches. And I want to say somebody at one time was putting out a cleaning kit that fit into a plastic case the shape and size of an AR mag, you know, 30 round mag. Man, I should have looked that up before I started this video. I want to say somebody was doing that. Now, I've never seen one, so if anyone's ever bought them, I don't know, but I, I want to say that I saw them advertised somewhere. But, same kind of concept, making, making your cleaning kit fit into the shape and size of an AR mag, like so. You could easily get all that stuff in there. Now, you probably wouldn't like how it rattled around and had the possibility of falling out. And that brings us to the next point. If you take nothing else from this video, I ask you to take this point. Go and get an old bed sheet, uh, maybe an old t-shirt, an old something, and cut a big square or rectangle out and make that your cleaning rag dedicated to your cleaning kit. And the purpose of this thing is, a bandana would be great, uh, but the purpose of this thing is, is several. One, you lay it out, and if you're having to take your, your bolt carrier group apart, you do it on this. Even out in the dirt and the mud, you do it on this. Uh, two, you wrap your gear up in it before putting it in the case so that your gear is more protected and more secured inside. And I mean just wrap it up. Just, just wrap it up and then stick it in whatever case. Like so. Got it all in there. If it's just like an AR mag, it's not going to come undone. It's not going to fall out. And uh, there's your cleaning kit. So that, that's probably the most common sense, common way of doing it. It's pretty much the same size as this, but it is much more agreeable when it comes to putting it on your gear and carrying it. Another option would be one of these little admin kits. Now, it's just a little Condor admin kit. Uh, you know, it goes on. It has these little... Uh, little uh, pieces of paracord that kind of holds it and, and it's made for you to like be able to look at your stuff you know you're holding it up on your chest and you're looking at it and that's great but it doesn't have to be worn or utilized that way this could go on the side of your pack and it could hold a lot of stuff it could certainly hold cleaning gear and that's just an example um, again that's kind of big I didn't see any admin kits that were any smaller so um, but that would certainly hold hold a uh, your cleaning gear. But I think it gets away from the tactical. I really think the best idea is to form your stuff up into a rag so that it fits in to a magazine pouch. And like I said, this is a two mag pouch. Um, I think I have a one mag pouch with a better flap. Let me look into that. Here you go. This would be almost perfect for a cleaning kit. Oh man, this is this is a. Uh, if you're one of my five faithful, you remember I got this with that Spears kit, and um, man, it only holds one mag, which kind of makes it. Mm, I don't know. Do I really want to use it? I think I have two of these, and if I do, I think you just saw two of my new cleaning kits. Oh man, this is going to hold everything, and I think I like it a lot better as a rifle cleaning kit holder than I did as a magazine holder. See, it just takes me sitting here and talking to you and talking it out for me to find what I want. And I found it. Folks, my new rifle cleaning kit. Hey, thanks for watching.